Oui, oui, bonjour. This is Sports on Today. Welcome back to ENCA. So the Spa Proteas continue their preparations towards the Netball World Cup after ending the Quad Series where uh, the world's top four nations competed. South Africa lost by a narrow seven-point margin against, of course, uh, the team that they played in the third-place playoff. I'm now joined by assistant coach Dumisani Chauke as we speak about the recently concluded event and the build-up to the World Cup. Good afternoon, Coach, great to have you on the show. What is your reflection on the team's performance in the Quad Series? Well, thank you so much for having me. Uh, well, first and foremost, I know Netball South Africa uh, was using the Quad Series 2023 to just gauge and, and check um, their readiness for the World Cup uh, coming down to Cape Town in 2023 in July. Uh, but us as a team as well was on, an opportunity to go out there uh, against world number one, two, and three and, and play against them and see how we fare. Um, sort of like also check and gauge our progress and identify areas that we need to to go back to the drawing board on and try and improve on in the next couple of months before July 28th when that first center pass is played. Coach, you were playing against the top three teams in the world and the close results would suggest that the team isn't too far from toppling them. Yeah, not too far at all. I mean, uh, yes, we had a, a, slow, a sluggish start, a slow start against New Zealand, going down by, you know, just uh, to run about 20 goals. And then we came back, we pulled it back um, against uh, England, where we drew 46 all. And then we went down to world number one um, by only 10 goals. And then, unfortunately, you know, um, that third place playoff not going quite as we had planned or as we had anticipated. And we lost uh, to England by seven goals. All right, what impact has the return of coach uh, Norma Plummer had on the team? And so to the return of uh, Carla Pretorius, I believe she was on maternity leave uh, to the playing squad. Yeah, well, uh, I'll start with Carla. Uh, Carla is a great infusion um, of energy in our defensive circle. She's one of um, the most respected uh, defensive players in the world. So it was a great confidence booster for our defensive unit to have her back. And as well as uh, Norma Plama, she brings the confidence, she brings the brains um, that and the experience that she's gathered over the years with coaching some of the top teams in the world and winning all those world championships. Um, when she was still coaching the Australian team. So we had quite an infusion of confidence um, into the Spa Proteus going into Quad Series. Uh, she's two-time World Cup champion. I hope she can bring the World Cup trophy, uh, you know, to South Africa. Well, to keep it on African soil, how important was it for the players to get used to playing in front of a capacity crowd and uh, playing under the weight of expectation from the home fans, especially when you consider that the World Cup is only a few months away in Cape Town? Cape Town being one of the locations which is a stronghold for netball in South Africa. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, uh, first and foremost, uh, full capacity. We are used to that when we go overseas. I mean, uh, when you go to England, um, you go to Australia, to New Zealand, those netball arenas are usually jam-packed, sold out, and everyone is just ready and, and excited and um, willing to, to rally behind the netball and support the girls. So coming back home, uh, we haven't played international netball on home soil in a while, but coming back home and playing in front of our own crowd, seeing familiar faces, friends and family, hearing the familiar familiar songs that are being chanted in South African arenas and South, Af and South African stadiums. It was quite a thrilling, um, thrilling feeling. Uh, so we're looking forward to having a lot of that uh, going into the World Cup in July. We do know that we've got fans all over the world, all over South Africa, that some have already booked their flights, booked their hotels, bought their tickets. They even have the Netball Friday t-shirts, they have their flags ready. So just being around our own people is a humbling um, experience. All right, coach, while the players carry a lot of the pressure, you as a coaching unit must also be feeling the pressure as you'll soon have to make a call on who makes the World Cup squad and who doesn't. A very difficult position to put yourself in. But do you have a clearer picture of the bulk of the squad that will be representing South Africa at the World Cup? Or has the performance of the team at the quad series made that selection much more difficult? Well, it's always difficult having to choose 12 players out of, say, about 30 players that might be in a squad. And we currently have some players that are contracted to Netball South Africa, and they form the basis and the bulk of the squad. Um, so, yes, it's going to be quite a headache. I mean, as a coach, 
having to choose players, you know, that are quite similar in style, quite similar in, in abilities and skill uh, can be a daunting task. But it's, it's a challenge that you take on whenever you, you agree and you decide to, let's say, listen, I'm going to take that hot seat. Um, it's part of the pressure. It's part of the job. So it's not going to be easy for us. But we do sort of have an idea. I mean, this was top class netball and gave us an opportunity to see who can um, withstand the pressure, who is able to handle that pressure and still perform through that pressure. So we do have um, sort of an idea, uh, but we're not giving out <laughs> any clues yet. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Coach, we have run out of time. Very quickly, the last question. What more assistance would you like to see come the way of the national team in the build-up to the World Cup, Coach? Well, first and foremost, I mean, our domestic league, the reason some of our players leave the shores and go to, to the UK, uh, go to New Zealand and to Australia, is to play in full-fledged professional um, netball leagues where day in and day out, all they do is train, eat, play, drink, sleep, netball. And we would like to have something like that at home, yes. We do have um, Telcom that have come on board. We've got the Telcom Netball League, which will be happening later on in the year as a build-up towards um, that um, World Cup. But it would be great to have other sponsors as well coming on board i mean if you look at the likes of uh, football in the country they do have your your multi-choice they've got the net bank cup they've got black label they've, they used to have um fnb they used to have upside they used to have shell so if we can get all those other corporates as well sticking up their hands and saying listen netball we recognize you we see the work that you're doing we see the growth in the sport we'd like to support you we'll definitely not say no to that Thank you very much, Coach, and all the best. The whole of South Africa will be backing you up at the Netball World Cup. That's uh, Dumi Sani Chauke, Pro Tiers Assistant Coach of the national team, and she's obviously speaking about the recently concluded quad series en route to the first ever Netball World Cup on African soil.